One year ago at this event, Simone Biles made her comeback to competitive gymnastics and just a few months later became the most decorated female gymnast in world championships history. Now one of the most dominant athletes of all time continues on the road to Tokyo. Olympic Channel, home of Team USA, presents the U.S. Classic. And a beautiful evening in Louisville, Kentucky. Always plenty of excitement in Derby City. And this weekend is no exception. Right along the Ohio River, hosting the U.S. Classic for the first time. And an opportunity for some fine tuning for the gymnasts competing here today ahead of the U.S. and World Championships, as well as the Pan American Games, whose roster will be chosen at the conclusion of this event. And there is the three-time and defending champion of this event, not to mention a four-time Olympic gold medalist, Simone Balls. We'll see her get started in just a little bit here as we welcome you inside. Tanith White alongside Olympic champions Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, and Nastia, a lot on the line today, but let's talk big picture first. We're just about a year away from the Tokyo Olympic Games. At this point, how focused are these athletes' minds on that singular end goal? <laughs> Well, you know, when we got to talk to them earlier this week, no matter what you say, you they all really did say, we try to get it out of our minds, but it's impossible. When it's a year out, that is the ultimate goal. You wake up every single morning, you go to sleep every single night thinking about the Olympic Games. A major motivating factor, of course, for all of these gymnasts. But Tim, Tokyo on the mind. In the meantime, there are just a handful of events left for these gymnasts to really prove themselves worthy of that selection. But what's on the line here tonight at the U.S. Classic. A lot. You know, usually this competition is just a tune-up for some of the top names for the national championships. But here, it's actually a selection competition for the Pan American Games, which is a very big deal. There are eight athletes that are in the pool right now. They will choose five that will compete and one non-traveling alternate. And after that, they're going to go right from here on Monday to the Pan Am Games. Then they're going to return, and a few days later, they'll have to make their way back to the U.S. National Championships. Very busy summer. Very busy indeed. And we take a look there at the schedule coming up, the World Championships as well, just around the corner. And what this schedule doesn't show is just the amount of time that those athletes are spending traveling to these events, then again taking the time to train before they begin to compete. Morgan Hurd, one of those athletes, hoping to do all three of the U.S. Classic, U.S. Championships, and Pan American Games events. And, and you know, it's a lot. And especially for a pre-Olympic year, having so many competitions, not just in one season, but back to back to back, really ultimately giving them not a lot of time to rest their bodies and their minds before really important competitions later this year. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. It's a whole heck of a lot to expect out of these young athletes. And so we're taking a look at one of those athletes we saw just a moment ago on the list of eight in that selection pool for the Pan American Games, Riley McCusker. She will be up first on our broadcast, 18 years old, from Brielle, New Jersey, a member, of course, of the gold medal winning 2018 U.S. women's team at the World Championships where she made her world debut. And this season coming off a career best finish at the Birmingham World Cup where she won the silver medal in the all around. And you know, last year she came in to this competition and the start of the competitive season for them. And she said, I feel confident. I think I, I really belong. And you know, there was a little bit of a hitch in her voice, but this year, I'll tell you what, she looks and sounds it. And I think she's going to have a great competition the way she has looked so far in Louisville. is planning on doing some upgraded gymnastics throughout the evening. She'll unveil a new skill on the balance beam as well. And you know, the thing that sets Riley apart from all the other competitors, and you'll see it right from the top, just absolutely beautiful form, execution, artistry, grace. And I'll tell you what, right out of the box, she was tested a little bit on that first wolf turn. The three times around and she stayed calm and patient. And here is that new skill. She's going to rebound on the third element and try to keep her body forward straight in the air. A layout somersault right here. 
Stunning. Pretty good. And some of the best beam workers in the world, when you watch them on the balance beam, they look as if they are tumbling on the floor exercise. And that's exactly what Riley did just there. Wow, this is really a great job and a super confident routine from Riley. Actually has grown quite a bit. Here's a very tricky dick dismount. Combination, two back handsprings, double back. Wow. And what a great start for Riley. Starting on the balance beam, first event, first person up, that is exactly what you want in a competitor, to go out there in any given situation, a world championships and Olympic games, and not even flinch under any amount of pressure. She crushed it out of the park, and this new element, very nicely done, rebounds instead of jumps into it. And here's that dismount you talked about, Tim. Two back handsprings into a double backflip. Look at her chest position on the landing. That's what the judges are looking for. Did a really great job one step on the landing, but what an amazing start. Worth mentioning as well that she's only had a handful of career international assignments, so still building that experience, that confidence as you touched on on the international stage, but in her third appearance as a senior here at the U.S. Classic and undoubtedly looking towards opportunities like the Pan American Absolutely. Games to really get some more of those kinks out. And that's what she told us when we talked to her a few days ago. She says, the more I can get out of the country, the better for me, because everything feels so different. The equipment, the time change, the arena, it's not as comfortable as you might feel at a competition like this. So we head on over to floor now where Morgan Hurd is getting set to go. 18 years of age, made her first big splash years ago with the Nastia Lucan Cup and has since put the work in to become the gymnast. She is today a world all-around champion from 2017, golden again in 2018 with the American women's team and now the reigning world all-around bronze medalist. Yeah, she has got quite the resume and she just exploded onto the gymnastic scene. And, you know, she was provided an opportunity in 2017. Reagan Smith, who was the front runner for that competition, went down with an ankle injury right before the event began. And Morgan Hurd was there to not just trot or run, but to explode through. And she is a world all around champion forever. Quite a title. And all of that well before her 18th birthday in that case, but she did just have her birthday a few days ago. She said she celebrated it on an idling airplane <laughs> on a runway <laughs> due to weather delays, but perhaps a celebration still to come. She'll start off with a big tumbling pass. Needs a lot of power. She's capable of doing more, but she has decided to go a little cleaner.
that was a very solid start for Morgan. As you said, Tim, she is capable of doing a harder routine, but because of that long season, perhaps doing easier. But this right here, that opening tumbling pass, a double layout, two flips in the air, completely stretched, maybe a tiny bit of a pike down on the landing in real time, can't tell quite as much. But really, a much easier routine. She's actually capable of doing that mount with not just one twist, but two twists. I think she is taking the right path, though. That was very clean and very well executed. So we'll get the scores for Morgan Hurd in a moment, but Riley McCusker in the meantime on beam scoring a 15.1. And that is a gigantic number on balance beam. <laughs> So a great start for McCusker as we head on over now to join Sunisa Lee, though. She told us nobody calls her that. So it's Suni Lee from here on out, 16 years of age from St. Paul, Minnesota. Nastia, she is spectacular, though, on this event. And right here from the start, absolutely beautiful. The combination, the execution, and it is nonstop. Hold on tight. Just huge element after element, many of them done in connection in that great handstand position right there, a little bit over. This is new for her, that combination, the one and a half pirouette. Only doing bars and beam here. Oh, she's fabulous. And you know, if you thought that bar routine was hard, she has even more in the bag that she didn't do here. No, absolutely. But watch this. Look at the height that she gets on this first release move. The stretched open hips position. That is perfection. And not only are those three skills so difficult <laughs> by themselves, but the combination makes it so much more difficult. Here's the dismount. A little bit too quick to stand up. Should have stayed down a bit. So a great start for a number of athletes already. But when we come back, the first rotation at the U.S. Classic continues with Simone Biles. Welcome back inside the Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. A look there at Morgan Hurd. She got her start on floor just a moment ago. And now all of the attention in the arena now falling on one woman and no one in the world can command the spotlight like Simone Biles. No one in the world now in the past and I don't know if in the future there'll be anybody quite like this young lady here. She is not just the best in the world. She crushed everybody in the world in Rio, came back in 2018 and was way better. And she is much better now. It is scary. And every time she takes the floor, everybody in the world is like, what is she going to do now? And you know, if she has a weak spot, if she does, it would be right here. But <laughs> Let's not forget, she's also a world medalist on this event. Really nice combination right there. Had to struggle a little bit on the handstand. And this is tricky for her. But the highlight is really the end. She's an acrobat by nature. Double twisting, double somersault. <laughs> Just like Simone Biles does. And you can just see on her face that big smile. She is definitely happy to get bars over with, get it out of the way first. And she'll be the first to tell you how much she really does not like the uneven bars. Well, this was the event when she teamed up with her new coaches, Laurent and Cecile Landy, initially where Laurent said he thought he could help her the most. And he has, absolutely, without a doubt. There is that two flips and two twists. A lot of the gymnasts will do that with just one turn around, but Oh. So an incredible start for Simone Biles. You talk about weak events. It's all relative <laughs> when it comes to Simone Biles. As we take a look now at Sloan Blakely in her final moments now ahead of her effort on floor. The 16 year old from Frisco, Texas, just finished her freshman year at Wakeland High School, but already committed to be a future Gator in Florida. So plans being laid 
for an exciting future for Sloan. And I'll tell you what, it was a good surprise for me. You got to see Evgeny Marchenko, who was mm -hmm. the coach for Carly Patterson all-around champion in 2004. He is back on the competition floor. Matt is allowed without any deduction. Well, it was a good exercise, a little bit close to a very bad landing at the end there. But this was nice, Arabian double front. It's a blind landing. She's a little bit boundy on the sticking aspect, a big step forward, but keeps that foot inside the blue, so no deduction. So right now, Simone Biles awaiting her scores for her efforts in this first rotation. And it's a 14.45 to kick things off for the defending Olympic and world champion. It's a great start. You know, I mean, it's, uh, as we've said, that's, that's the lowest number we'll most likely see from Simone today. All five members of the U.S. Women's gold medal winning world championship team are here in Louisville competing at the U.S. Classic today. And in what was her first year senior, Grace McCallum was one of them. And she delivered. In the qualifying, she did three events. Her two strongest floor and vault, also the uneven bars. But in the team final, did floor and vault. And had great performances. Really nice. Wolf turns there. When you see someone like Simone or Grace do that, they make it look way too easy because you'll see other athletes and it does not look like that. <laughs> One of my least favorite skills on <laughs> the balance beam, I think, but she did it very well. Gorgeous combination, three elements in a row. The side aerial to two layout step outs becoming more popular. Little conservative on one of her leaps there. What the judges are looking for in every single leap and jump is a 180 degree split. So it was a little short of that. Really easy to do that in practice, but sometimes in a big competition when all the eyes are on you, it can be very easy to hold back just a little bit. Dismount here, round off, double back. Just a small step, a, a very solid routine though, absolutely. Grace McCallum, 16 years of age from Minnesota, finished just off the podium in the all around at last year's US Championships after a year where she was 11th in junior at national, so a this, huge step. Sorry, Dan, at this mount is, is really incredible. It's, and it's harder than it looks. I think she makes it look so easy jumping backwards, finding the beam. Watch this side aerial, and not one, but two layout step outs in a row. And that was money from start to finish right there. And here's that dismount. So she'll do a round off, double backflip. And again, look where her shoulders and chest is on that landing. Very good, just that step. And 
as she waits her scores. Just a little bit of catching up here as things are happening quite quickly across all the apparatus. Sunisa Lee scoring a 14.65 on bars. Morgan Hurd earning a 13.4 on floor. And then Sloan Blakely, whom we saw just a moment ago on floor as well, scoring a 12. Point five five. So we're playing catch up a little bit, but a very exciting time here today, an exciting time for USA Gymnastics as we take a look at Lili Leung in the building, the president and CEO of USA Gymnastics on hand today to take in all of the action. I'm sure eager to take in all the performances from all of these Olympic hopefuls and there are a number of them at this point. I tried to get you two to narrow down the team in your own opinion. It was very tough to get it to even a top six. So Grace McCallum there will wait just a little bit longer for the numbers as we take a look at another fresh face to the senior scene this season though she's already made her senior international debut for Team USA. Here is Gabby Perea. And I'll tell you what a, a couple of years ago she was just a phenom. I thought one of the top gymnasts in the world, but unfortunately the injury bug has been relentless for this young lady. It was a foot in 2017, a knee in 2018, and she has been dealing with back problems ever since. Big skill, that was so great. Back with a full twist and just perfect. Oh boy, and she really got the super tough element out of the way and relatively easy series there comes off the balance beam. Of course, it's a full point off. And you know, a lot. there's obviously multiple reasons for falling off the beam. A lot of the times, especially maybe for somebody like Gabby, hasn't competed much. It's really getting that experience out there. You know, so many injuries. Yes. Practice is one thing. Competing yes. is a completely different environment, different feeling. But she, you know, she says she's relatively healthy. She doesn't look all that healthy when you watch her train. All of these injuries, she said, she can still feel them, but they don't cause her a problem. Round up, double twist. And not only has she had to deal with adjusting to injuries, also adjusting to a huge growth spurt in the last several years. Grace McCallum there scoring a 14.1 for her effort on B. We'll have the score for Gabby Perea in just a moment. So that'll do it for this first rotation. In rotation two, we'll continue our coverage, including Simone Biles from the U.S. Classic in just a moment. Keep it right here. We're just getting started. Quick look there at Simone Biles as she gets set to warm up for the second rotation at the U.S. Classic. Tanith White alongside Nastia Lukin and Tim Daggett. And we saw a couple of standout routines during that first rotation, guys, including Riley McCusker, 15.1, a big number right now as we head into rotation number two. This is a name that you two, in talking with you ahead of the event, continually bring up. I know you both really enjoy her gymnastics. What is it about Riley Nastia that you think allows her to stand out? Well, I think I said it from the very top. It's just she has a different look. It's the execution, the form, the artistry, the grace. We saw it on the balance beam. We'll also see it on the floor exercise doesn't have as much difficulty on the floor exercise as we'll later see from Simone Biles but just take a look at the dance elements it is just beautiful yeah you know and she's one of those gymnasts and it's very rare she's not about learning the new harder skill she is about doing things more precise more correct now if you looked at the standings and you saw that Simone was not atop of them don't be worried folks <laughs> at all she has got Three just ginormous routines coming up, and this beam routine will end 
with a full in back out and she does that better and easier now than I have ever seen her. Wouldn't she, be surprised if we saw a little upgrade coming up there. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's capable of adding a full twist to that, which would be a double-double. Never seen it done in international competition. I've seen her do it in training, though. You know, you think about someone like Simone, unfathomable ability, and then the ability to be able to coach that. How exciting. We'll be back with the second rotation in just a moment. Welcome back inside the Yum Center, where 2017 World All-Around Champion Morgan Hurd is set to go now on vault. Morgan, one of the athletes, looking to secure themselves a spot on the Pan American Games team today. And despite her record, she said she doesn't consider herself a shoe-in. So she wants to earn her spot on that team here today. But that will mean a very busy schedule for her coming up in the near future. U.S. Championships on the heels of that potential trip to Lima later this month. That's nearly three back-to-back -back <laughs> events. Incredible. Well, it is, and the Pan American Games, it is not one competition. She'll probably compete four different days and all the training. It's a lot. Now, and then let's not forget to the World Championships, which come <laughs> after that in, in pretty much the biggest competition of the entire season this year as they look ahead towards Tokyo next year. She was 12th after the first round, but don't bother yourself with that as well because she is the kind of kid that just sneaks up on you. Every event is great. And that was excellent. By far the best I have seen her do here in Louisville on that double twisting laid out Yurchenko. You have to remember also that every event is scored by different judges and at different events, di sometimes floor is the most critically evaluated. When I look at what happened on floor in the first rotation, it looked like floor was gonna be it. Nice, good, powerful run and get her arms back. Sometimes twists a little early off the table. That was a little bit better for her. She was able to stay right in between those lines so won't incur what's called a neutral deduction. Well, despite the challenges, you'd be hard pressed to convince Morgan that this trip to the Pan Ams wasn't worth it because she's very excited about the apparel the team is getting. She told us, we're getting a hoodie this time. And apparently that's something that's never happened before. We were all standing around like, somebody get this girl a hoodie. Yes, yeah, she, she actually said, yeah, the meet, you compete and it's over, but the apparel, it lasts for a lifetime. Up next, 18-year-old Trinity Thomas from York, Pennsylvania, though now living in Gainesville, Florida, where she competes for the Florida Gators during the NCAA season and has been a force on the college gymnastics scene since she was seventh in the all-around at the 2019 NCAA championships. And she's pulling double duty. She's competing at the elite level, also at the collegiate level. Level That's pretty rare. It is rare, and it's because of that grueling schedule to be an elite gymnast, the hours that you have to commit. Of course, luckily, you know, they're, they're not in season for, for college right now, so she was able to do that. But as soon as that starts back up, she'll be heading back to Florida and representing the Gators again. Absolutely. She was the SEC Freshman of the Year, had a very nice first year. There are a lot of gymnasts that have already committed to going to Florida as well. Riley McCusker, Morgan Hurd. And you know, the difference between college gymnastics and elite gymnastics, despite the amount of hours that you train, the skills also, the routines are much shorter in college gymnastics. So really having to work hard on your endurance, that stamina for these longer routines. But so far, showing really no sign of difficulty. Big release right here. And this is, like you just said, this is so much longer and so much harder than she would have competed as a Gator last year or this year coming up. But handles that extremely well. Well, Trinity was fourth on bars at the 2018 U.S. Championship. So just off the podium, though, she did pick up two national medals the year before on beam and floor. 
And take a look at this. Look at that height that she gets. Arms just a tad close on the release. Tiny bit of a leg separation on the pack salto, the, the high to low, but goes right back up to the high bar. And a beautiful finish right there. Gorgeous straight body position on that DLO double layout. And she's happy with that. I was actually surprised only doing bars and beam here, though. So it's a 14.5 there for Morgan Hurd as we head on over to join 16-year-old Shylise Jones. Born in Seattle, Washington, but moved on to Ohio to pursue her gymnastics career. In fact, her whole family relocated with her so that she could have the opportunity to train at the Future Gymnastics Academy. Her Instagram handle, she can fly, and boy, can she watch this vault. Just tremendous power. Boom! Wow! Maybe next to Simone, that will be the most powerful vault we see today. That was gigantic. It was, and, and what you want to look for is that height and the rotation away from the horse, and you see she really over-rotated quite a bit, but her hips completely open. So many gymnasts pike down that landing, not her. Yeah, that landing position, that was key, critical, and if they took anything for how she met with the floor, I'd have to say they were wrong. That was zero deductions on that. Of course, the hop. So we head back over to floor now and get our first look of the day at 18-year-old Jade Carey, the 2017 world silver medalist on vault and floor who has been blazing her own path to Tokyo through the World Cup qualifiers and the individual apparatus series. She's certainly on track to secure one of those spots. We'll get a little more into that later. Jade, of course, coached by her father, Brian, training in her home state of Arizona. Now called doing dad home, things. Yeah. Dad, dad <laughs> Tell telling the camera, the camera guy, get out of the way. I love it. Yeah, he's looking out for his, his child, and, and that that's big. But talking about big, you know, we saw Morgan Hurd go a little bit conservative on floor exercise, but with Jade Carey, you are going to see I would say this is the second most difficult floor routine being done currently in the world. Of course, Simone Biles has just a little bit more in the routine. Starting off a double twisting, double laid out somersault right here. just difficult to perform by itself. Then add on to the fact that you're in the middle of a floor routine. Here's that opening tumbling pass. You'll see she does two flips and two twists, but completely laid out. That was phenomenal. And many of the world's best gymnasts would dream about being able to do a double-double for their first tumbling pass. This is her third one, and she makes it easily. Really, really good stuff performed extremely well for Jade Carey. So a hug from Dad Brian. By the way, we asked those two how much she was looking forward to starting at Oregon State after this Olympic campaign. She said she's excited. Brian seemed to have some mixed emotions, <laughs> joking, maybe I'll buy a condo out there. It's going to be hard to say goodbye. 
as we take a look at Leanne Wong now in her final moments of preparation, 15 years old, had her senior elite debut at American Cup where she had a very competitive all around score and took the gold medal. Beautiful inside stalter. She scoots her feet in between the bars very hard and a great combo right there. Tanith, you mentioned she's 15. You have to be 16 to compete in the year you're competing to be a senior. That's why she's able to be here today and why she was able to win that American Cup a little bit over on that last pirouetting handstand, though. And you see she tries to cover up that step on the landing. Most likely will not quite be a stick, but yeah. absolutely gorgeous positions both through the release moves, the pirouettes, Tim, you mentioned one a little bit low, but take a look at this dismount right here. You want to see her hips completely open all the way around until the landing. But Very that, well that, That's a big step though. Yeah. I mean, she didn't fool anybody on the floor. If it's more than a meter, it's a three-tenth deduction, and I would say that the judges will take three on that. So the competition is heating up as we make our way towards the halfway point of this event. Still a handful of competitors left to go in the second rotation, including Simone Biles. Jay Carey taking a well-deserved rest now after her effort on floor, earning a 14.250. Right now, she's busy cheering on some of her teammates. Trinity Thomas, by the way, on bars, scoring a 14.2. Shailise Jones vault, earning a 14.65. And Leanne Wong, 13.75 on bars. Back to Simone Biles now, the defending world and Olympic all-around champion. She's won the all-around at this event, the U.S. Classic, three times in her career. And a quick look there at Tom Forster. We mentioned Lili Leung on hand as well tonight, the new CEO and president of USA Gymnastics. And Simone will also start with one of those wolf turns. She does this faster and with more power than anybody. It's just she flies <laughs> about half the time it takes for somebody else to go three times around. First big test right here, three in a row. Back handspring layout, layout. Oh, great fight. And you know, her coach, Laurent Landy, he has said that Simone cannot compete against anybody else in the world because frankly, everybody's way behind her. The person she has to compete against is herself. She has to become the best Simone that Simone can be. And you know, that's actually what she told us when we talked to her too, when we were asking why all these upgrades when you can still be the best with your current routines. And she says, because I want to be better than myself. Take a look at this dismount right here. Two back handsprings, full twisting, double back. Oh my gosh. Oh. Never, never has it been done better than that right there, that dismount. Laurent's wife, Cecile. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. And here's that wolf turn. Take a look at her arms. She's a little bit off, but it's almost as if she's balancing herself <laughs> out. It's pretty incredible. Really nice series. She was a little bit off, but boy, does she make that error just disappear. And here's that dismount. Just look at the height that she gets in the air. Yeah, she could do another <laughs> twist, absolutely. A lot of people can't do, including myself, <laughs> can't do that skill on the floor exercise. For her to be able to do that at the end of her beam routine, off four inches wide, as well as she just did, is just incredible. And you know, I love this. You, you pointed this out to me earlier. 
on the leotard, there are four gymnasts from world champions competing, and it says WCC on the back of all of them. On Simone, it says Biles. Well, Simone, you mentioned pushing herself to impressive heights. She shows off some of those skills on social media, much to her fans' delight. But I have to think, if you're her competitor, watching those videos, motivated, inspired, sure, but also just thinking, oh, come on. <laughs> and not just that, you know, talking to some of the athletes here, even this week, they were like, oh, it's a little nerve-wracking competing alongside her. They were a little intimidated. But I think you have to look at it as, as you mentioned, Tanith, the inspiration, the motivation. And, and luckily for Jordan Childs right here, actually just recently moved to train with Simone under Laurent and Cecile. 18 years old from Vancouver, Washington. And as you mentioned, just recently making the move to Spring, Texas. So now training mates with Simone Biles at the Biles Family Gym. Such a big move and looking for the results to show it was the right one. And undoubtedly being able to train alongside Simone day in and day out. It's hard to measure the impact that could have on a gymnast. Yeah, it could be astounding, actually. You're seeing the greatest of all time every single day. Jordan has had some great competitions. In 2017, she was second in the all-around at the national championships. Many people thought that was her ticket to place on that world team, and she was left off after a selection camp. She said she thought she had done everything in her power and had done enough to make that team. Jordan for many years did that same wolf turn, has taken that out. She's struggled with it sometimes. Really solid. When you do these leaps, starting facing sideways, typically it's a more bonus points for them. Very popular from all the gymnasts now. has looked more focused at this event, in my opinion. Great right there, that side flip sometimes gives her a problem. Does a huge double pike dismount from this round off or half turn. Stuck that landing. And that's funny, she actually didn't get as good of a bounce as she usually does, but Gymnastics 101, fly high and stick the landing. You got it. I was waiting for that. Come on, Liv, you got it. <laughs> Confidence. Simone Biles giving some support, some encouragement from the sidelines. She scores a 14.9 on beam. That's two tenths lower than the number we saw posted by Riley McCusker. That surprise you at all? It does, actually. You know, Riley was fantastic, as we'll see right here on floor exercise as well, but. There were very few deductions in Simone's routine. This is another place where Riley said she was going to do an upgrade. If she does it, it'll come in her first pass. It's a double laid out somersault. She used to do a full twisting double. Went a little conservative, good choice.
Another fabulous routine for Riley McCusker. And you know, even when Riley had had great routines in the past, I always thought there was a little hint of anxiety. I see none of that today. Double twist right into this punch front and then a beautiful leap. Very difficult and extremely well done. And here's that last tumbling pass. So a double back flip. So just two flips in a tuck position. Shoulders up in the landing, small hop. But Tim, I couldn't agree with you more. Just watching her in training and then just these first two events, there's a level of confidence in her that I don't think I have seen yet. Remember, Riley McCusker at the 2018 World Championships had the scores to compete in the all-around final, but was excluded because of that two per country rule with Hurd and Biles qualifying in those top two sports. So Riley was forced out of that mix actually, in that case. Actually eighth in the all-around. So a little bit earlier on in this rotation, Grace McCallum took to the floor, the 2018 world team member and team gold medalist eyes her next objective now. And you know, Grace made that world team predominantly because of this routine and her vault. Does a really nice double twisting double. Actually can do much better than that. This routine was a little bit earlier. You don't like it on beam, I hate it on floor. <laughs> Sorry. But you know you, you you've got to you got to play to the code of points. There are rules, and and it works for her, and so she should do it. Well, not just her, but so many of the athletes. When that skill is valued, you know, so much higher than some more difficult skills. That's why we see so many athletes doing it. Beautiful tumbling pass right there. Yeah, Stuff that landing. That was awesome. Full twisting double third pass. Really surprised that she landed as low as she did on that first tumbling run. Well, sometimes the athletes are trying to go for that stick landing like she did right there. And, and after the start, that was phenomenal. So that was the effort on floor from Grace McCallum, and she scored a 14.25, tied with Jade Carey for the highest score on floor. And Riley McCusker, 13.9. So that's how she factors into the mix for the time being. Still plenty more gymnastics to come from Louisville. When we return, Simone Biles will head over to floor. You don't want to miss it. Keep it right here. Welcome back to the U.S. Classic, presented by Olympic Channel, home of Team USA. Two rotations down and two to go here in Louisville. And Simone Biles, the leader after those first two rotations. And we take a look at the standings. And we have seen some outstanding gymnastics thus far. Simone Biles we see there, Riley McCusker in that second position, Leanne Wong and Grace McCallan rounding out those top four. But right now we have a very special guest, uh, the man with all the answers, or at the very least, I'm going to try to get a couple out of you today, Tom, Tom Forster, the women's high performance team coordinator. Tom, we're just about a year out from the Tokyo Olympic Games. Can you give us a broad sense of how the team is doing, how they're looking now as we approach that decision making time to narrow down to four heading to Tokyo? I think they're looking good. Uh, we've been comparing what the schedule is for this year to what they're going to go through 12 months from now. So the timing of the U.S. Classic, the U.S. Championships in a couple of weeks, and then Olympic trials eventually, it mirrors this year in the sense they're really back to back. So watching how these athletes perform in the next few weeks is really critical, and they know that, and they're doing a good job. 
by the time you know what I noticed initially is you have Morgan Hurd and Riley McCusker, two of the very top athletes in the country right now. They are planning to go back to back to back, three events yeah. in a row. And when I saw that initially, I thought maybe a little bit too much, especially with the World Championships later in October. What's the strategy and the thinking with that? Well, you know, don't disconnect don't discount the American girl. I mean, these kids are tenacious. They're very, very competitive. And uh, the coaches are smart. They got good coaches that know how to, to prepare them. We do have some exceptions for them at US championships that they need to come down a little bit to protect themselves. We've allowed that. You don't think it's that. too much, though? No. OK. <laughs> All righty. There you have it. <laughs> well, Tom, no. we certainly appreciate your time. We thank you for joining us. We're very excited to watch all of these events unfold over the course of the next year, though. We certainly don't envy your role in that selection process. So much talent to choose from. When we return, the third rotation will be underway, and your leader will be back in action. Simone Biles in a moment. And we welcome you back. U.S. Women's Gymnastics has been headlined the last several years by a number of standout gymnasts. And leading things off for us in rotation number three is one of those big names. Jade Carey, the world silver medalist in 2017 on floor and vault, U.S. champion on this event in 2017. And she has since grown quite accustomed to podium finishes on those two events. And they are where she shines on a global scale as well. We've been watching her through that FIG individual apparatus World Cup series where she can earn an individual spot to the Olympic Games in Tokyo. It's a new world out there for qualification. Completely new rules and standards to go by. And it's a little bit complicated, admittedly, even for Jade and her coach and father, Brian. She does two different, really difficult vaults. Nicely done, the best one I've seen her do here in Louisville. Very complicated vault. It's called a Chung for the great Chinese gymnast. She'll do a half turn onto the board. First get a lot of speed, then half turn onto the board, then half turn to the table. Laid out somersault with one and a half twist. Very difficult vault and done extremely well. And you see just leg separation from the table and even in the air just a little bit. And you know, we're, we're so picky, but that yes. is exactly what the judges are looking for, taking that deduction. But a, but a great first vault. And you see she is going to do a second vault. Not many here today will do two vaults. But when you get to the World Championships, to the Olympic Games, in order to qualify to the apparatus final on this event, you have to perform two different vaults in what we call two different families. So different entries onto the vaulting table. Jade Carey scoring a 14.9 for that first vault. Big number. Don't know if she's going to do the two and a half here. Struggled a little bit in training, and that was probably a very good choice. Only goes with the double full, but it is a beauty. And you see how much height she gets in the air and really over rotates that. She's capable, as you said, Tim, of doing a much more difficult vault, which we have seen from her. Has, has yet to unveil it in the World Cup series, however. And here is once again the 2017 World All-Round Champion. Five career world medals all together for Morgan Hurd. And the young woman whom author J.K. Rowling called a real-life <laughs> hero in glasses in reference to her character Harry Potter from the book series which Morgan had said she was a huge fan of. Now the two are big fans of each other and certainly Morgan gaining plenty of fans with her gymnastics on her road to Tokyo as well. Yeah, she is a, a, a huge Harry Potter fan. And not just Harry Potter, she is constantly reading new books every single time we see her. She's, she's telling us about a new series that she's now into. And you know what I love about Morgan Hurd? I mean, she is a younger person, obviously. She doesn't go digital. She says, I need to feel the book. I got to feel turning the pages. That is not the typical teenager at this point in time. And quickly, while we have a moment, you called it, Tim, that second vault for Jade Carey, scoring a 14.7, so two tenths shy of the score for vault number one. And that averages out to a 14.8. 
Morgan has been doing this very routine for a long time. It's all about being clean. Great handstands. Very nice. Here's her biggest combination. A little bit over on that handstand, but fine. Now she'll connect. Gorgeous. And another really go for it position on that handstand. That'll give your coach the heebie jeebies, I'll tell you. Don't want to fall the wrong way, but connected right into her dismount. And that was absolutely beautiful. Not just those releases, but Tim, as you mentioned early on in the routine, you are trying to hit every single handstand, and she did absolutely that. Wow. So we'll have the scores for Morgan Hurd in a moment, but right now the competition rolls on with Kara Eaker, 16 years old, grew up and still trains in Missouri, now a two-time national team member and part of that gold medal winning U.S. women's team at the World Championships in 2018. She made the event finals and fell off on that mount that she just did that leap. But when it mattered most for Team USA, boy, did she deliver, had the highest beam score. Not just for the U.S., but for every competitor, the only 14 on beam in the meet. What I was saying, what I love so much, first of all, this combination, extremely difficult and just does it perfect. But what I love so much about this routine is it is it just constantly flows from one element into a dance element into another. That's gorgeous. Beautiful combination connecting all three of those elements. When she's on, she is world class and absolutely in contention for not just any medal, but potentially even gold at the world or the Olympics. But it is such a connection heavy routine. It makes it really difficult. She'll do a round up back handspring, laid out somersault, two and a half twists right here. Spectacular. Well, we've seen some great competition so far today at the U.S. Classic, but the excitement started yesterday in training, watching Simone Biles on floor. Just take a look at this. The intergalactic debut of a triple twisting, double back somersault, one twist, two, and a third. Impossible, people said. Not for someone like Simone Biles. Wow. And you know, she's actually not going to compete that tumbling pass here today, possibly debuting it at the national championships, but don't worry, the routine is still just so difficult starting from this opening tumbling pass. Yeah, I said to her though, why aren't you doing it? And she says, I'll get killed. I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? You do it so easily. Big one here too though. And that is a new element combination for her. Both feet out of bounds. That's a three-tenth deduction when both go out of bounds. That's gonna be the biggest difficulty with that tumbling pass, keeping it in. Oh my goodness, Simone Biles, wow.
You know, sometimes when I watch Simone, we're so used to special effects and CGI oh, yeah. at the yeah. movies. It's it's hard to remember. This is not an illusion. No, not at all. And she could do a more difficult, add another full twist to this, but that was so gorgeous in the air. And here's that second tumbling pass named the Biles because she was the first to perform it in the world. Double out, half twist to a punch front layout. And you see, she just has so much power, can't stay in bounds. We saw Jade Carey do a double-double in her third pass. This is the fourth pass. It's it's impossible to do this at the end. Somebody tell Simone it's impossible. <laughs> you know, and that is actually what she said. One of her goals for this competition was to stay in bounds because she has so much power, especially in a competition. A little more adrenaline, really hard to keep it all in and hard to keep up with Simone Biles. But Morgan Hurd scoring a 14.7 on bars, and that is the highest bar score, score so far tonight. So that megawatt smile from Simone Biles. The competition will continue from Louisville in a moment. Welcome back to Louisville, Kentucky. Tanith White alongside Nastia Lucan and Tim Daggett. Jordan Childs getting set to go on floor. We saw her on beam in the last rotation. She scored a 13.65 there. But by the way, Kara Eaker scoring a 15.4 Stratospheric. on beam. 6.8 in difficulty. Incredible number. And I think she would have gotten most of those connections, not just in the U.S. A lot of people say that sometimes the U.S. judges on home soil are a little too lenient. I think she should have gotten all of them. Looked pretty good to me anyways. So it will be Simone's new training mate coming up next on floor, Jordan Childs. And if you're a casual fan, don't immediately recognize the name. You may remember her Wonder Woman inspired leotard <laughs> from last year's U.S. Championships. She's actually named after the great Michael Jordan. Has five different pairs of Air Jordans. is allowed, but she definitely went completely out of the blue area. She'll lose for the hop and then three tenths for being both feet out of bounds. She can be better, without a doubt. Three tumbling passes were a little bit messy on the landing. Does a lot of tough stuff, but can execute much better than that. And tough to follow Simone Biles, of course, <laughs> on floor at any time. A 15 even for Biles after her efforts. And what? even with 1.8 in deductions, it's the highest <laughs> score of the night. Absolutely. Well, 16.8 starting score and believe it or not that's actually an easy routine for Simone she can add you know at least three more tenths maybe more so the Pan American Games will take place later this month quick turnaround for the athletes who will be selected for that team but first step is getting the assignment and that's the immediate objective here for Leanne Wong series right here three in a row Gorgeous, not a hint of hesitation. You can oftentimes see a little bit of 
caution on those full turns. Absolutely none evident right there. Earlier this year at the American Cup, she said that she really liked having all the attention <laughs> on her. And you're up there on the apparatus one at a time at a competition like that, and she really thrived under that kind of situation, which not a lot, not a lot of athletes can do that. I, I've never heard a, a gymnast say that, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so, really difficult dismount, a little unusual. Triple twist, got to get it all the way around. Oh, that was fabulous. A beautiful exercise for Leanne Wan. She is certainly well in the running. I can't imagine at this point her not making a trip to the Pan Am Games. As you said, here's that dismount, Tim. So many of the athletes here do double flips, double pikes, but one flip and three twist, extremely difficult trying to get that all the way around. And that's what the judges are looking for, making sure your feet are completely around those three rotations. And we see a lot of elite gymnasts do only a double full at the end of their beam routine. It's so good to see them pushing the envelope there. Olivia Hollingsworth is the next gymnast on floor now and another World Champion Center athlete training alongside Simone Biles, Jordan Childs, whom we saw moments ago scored a 12.5 on floor. Well, actually, a good recovery for her after a bit of a devastating balance beam routine that only scored an 11.55. She was at the Classic last year, finished in 17th position after two rotations. She's 18th here, but remember, this is the best of the best in the USA, and that is saying a lot. Olivia from Seabrook, Texas, born in China, adopted as an infant by the woman she called the most amazing mom to whom she is forever grateful, now 17 years of age, competing and training among some of the best in the world. And this event has no shortage of noteworthy up-and-comers on the U.S. women's gymnastics scene. And here is another in that mix, Aaliyah Finnegan, first-year senior from Missouri. And if that name sounds familiar, you may be thinking of her sister, Sarah, the 2012 Olympic alternate and LSU standout. And she, Sarah, was just an absolutely gorgeous gymnast, both as an elite and then did so much in college as well. Really difficult standing Arabian. Love that. Four of the Finnegans did gymnastics. She's the only one left. Good fight right there. Very good job in this competition, has already competed the vault and the uneven bars. Nice job. 
three elements connected together. Gage has long been known, that's the club she's at with Al Fong and Armini Baratien, been known for great execution and great balance beam as well. Watch this, really different. Little crooked, but boy, does she hold on to that really challenging combination. But really, the, the highlight for me was this opening skill. It's called a standing Arabian. So jumps, half turn front, and blind landing. So that means you cannot see the beam. You have to be so technically precise on that skill. And it was beautiful. Really good job. Really good. Tim, you mentioned Aaliyah training a gauge along with Leanne Wong and Kara Eaker, who are also in the hunt for that Pan American Games team right around the corner. So a little friendly support and some competition running side by side here. Yeah, someone from Gage, certainly probably a couple will be on that team. Next up, a new face to the senior scene. This is Emily Lee, 16 years of age from Los Gatos, California. Nice job, started out with a double laid out somersault. I've seen training videos of her doing it with a half turn. The Biles not quite ready yet. She comes from the same gym as the Magnificent Seven team member, Amy Chow, one of the very greats. And earlier on in this rotation, we got a look at a familiar face getting set to go with hopes for a second chance to make her Olympic dreams come true. 2016 Olympic team alternate, Michaela Skinner. And this was the scene in 2016. You see there all the team members receiving congratulations. And Michaela, since having dealt with the regret of not being able to continue on with her Olympic dream, but she did go on to make her college dreams come true in Utah, and she has been an outstanding athlete there. She's put that now on hold to pursue another chance at an Olympic team. Yeah, that is, that is the only reason that she's here, in my opinion. She was so close to being on that team. A lot of people thought that she would help more. This is one of her signature, signature skills, back handspring into a back with a full. Perfect. And you know, she had so far, possibly not even over, has had such a great college career at Utah. And you have to think the amount of times that they compete weekend after weekend after weekend is very different than this elite scene but it has possibly given her so much more confidence coming out here, being able to compete under these bright lights. But she did kind of tell us, I forgot how exhausting it was <laughs> training so many more hours than in college. And she also said, you know, it, she didn't think this was gonna happen, but when she came out immediately, she said she could feel the tension, the anxiety. It was a lot more than she said she experiences in the NCAA program. A lot of people thought she should have made that team because of her floor exercise and her vaulting has huge difficulty. Also has some chops on balance beam as well. Very nice routine. That flip flop back with a full, excellent. 
So that was a little bit earlier on in the rotation. Michaela Skinner scoring a 13.75 for her effort on beam. Leanne Wong on beam a little bit earlier on as well, scoring a 14.3. And Aaliyah Finnegan there just beside her, by the way, scoring a 13.85. So the competition continues. That'll do it for the third rotation. She looks plenty relaxed, doesn't she? <laughs> Simone Biles in the lead with one rotation remaining, 44.35, her current overall score. We'll be back in a moment. Five-time Olympic medalist Simone Biles looks for a sixth all-around championship as she headlines the field at the 2019 U.S. Gymnastics Championships, August 8th through 11th on NBC and NBCSN, part of the Team USA Champion Series presented by Xfinity. As we welcome you back inside the Yum Center, where we are three rotations into this all-around competition at the U.S. Classic. So far, the defending champion, of, well, everything, more or less, <laughs> has been leading the way. Riley McCusker, Grace McCallum, also among those in the hunt now as we approach rotation number four. But Simone Biles, the defending Olympic and world champion, really made a statement with that floor routine we saw moments ago. But it's hard to say that she's not outstanding just about anywhere. Absolutely, and this might be her best event. She can win worlds and Olympics on this event so easy. She has a new vault also. That's a chung, but she had to do it one better, unveil the Biles at the last world championships, an extra half turn. She's just unreal. And there are the current standings after three rotations. As we said, Riley McCusker in second place, Grace McCallum right now in that third position, followed by Kara Eager, Leanne Wong. Morgan Hurd, the 2017 world all-around champion, currently in fifth. But it's interesting, you know, with all of these gymnasts, who have such incredible ability on display in competition, but their bag of tricks at home <laughs> is beyond belief. What does it take to get those skills prepared to be put in the context of a routine? Well, it's a lot more difficult, especially in a competition setting. What we've been talking about all evening, under the pressure, the nerves, the adrenaline, the, the audience, everything that you have with it. But if someone can do it, it has been <laughs> Simone Biles. Almost every competition we've seen her in has been doing a new skill. It's been incredible. So when we come back, the fourth rotation will be underway. Simone Biles has vault left, and Morgan Hurd will be on B. Back in a moment. Final apparatus now for 22-year-old Simone Biles at the U.S. Classic. And, you know, it would be reasonable to think that maybe Simone might not compete all four at this event. When we spoke to her in training, though, there was no question. She said, absolutely, that was the plan. Certainly looking no worse for the wear. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you what, there is no way she isn't going to win this. The only way she doesn't win if she trips while she's running down the runway, falls, and can't get back up again. This is as much of a lock as is possible. She will do the same vault that we saw from Jade Carey. That half turn onto the board, half turn to the table, one and a half off. But she does it much cleaner, gets a little bit better bounce. Typically, she would be doing two vaults. She would do them at the Worlds and the Olympics to be eligible for a medal. So she won't be the vaulting champion at the Classics, which I'm sure she's really broken up about. Huge power. Watch how fast her hands get to the table. Oh, my gosh. Ridiculous. Well, there you go. Another title <laughs> to add to her collection. She must have heard you. She ran very efficiently. <laughs> <laughs> and as you said, Tim, so difficult. You see a bound up half on, and look at that body position. Just absolutely gorgeous. And you know, her technique, everybody knows she's so powerful, but technically she does things so well. A lot of gymnasts, when they're doing the flight phase, so off of the table, they start twisting too early. She does not at all, and that's why she's Simone Biles, wow.
And you know, it's so funny. She opened up the competition right here on the event that we are now going to see Grace perform on. And, and I said, that was probably her weakest event. Let's, let's be real. She doesn't have a weak event, but ending on probably her two favorites. So Grace McCallum now on bars. Only about 1.2 points behind Simone in the overall standings right now. Are you surprised by that at all? I'm actually surprised, but she'll open it up, certainly. And Grace is having a little bit of a rough time here. She was trying to connect that release to the one prior to it. Had to do a kip cast in between. She's very good on bars, but I think she is not as comfortable on this event as she is on her no-brainers, floor exercise and vaulting. Sarah Jancy, coach of the great Maggie Nichols. So very nice release skill, but she wanted to do it in connection before that, and that handstand was short. And these judges, they are strict. Just take your time on that landing. Only a tenth of a point for that step. But you know, let's not also forget that, as we've talked about really all evening, how long this season is in so many competitions back to back. So a lot of these athletes aren't quite at 100%. Simone <laughs> is probably at 100% every single time she steps out there. Huge number. She says as a 15.65 <laughs> flashes on the screen. Yeah, you know, it She's always... Like, I don't know what you're talking about, Nasty. I'm good. It always bugs me a little bit when athletes say that, you know, I'm 110% or 115%. Well, Simone is actually 200% all the time. <laughs> But really, it is okay to not quite be at your best right here at the U.S. Classic. Of course, the Pan American Champion Games team will be determined. But really, every single athlete here is focusing on the World Championships later this year. And of course, the Olympic Games that are your way. You have to really trust that preparation, not, you know, not get ready too quickly early on in the season. And Michaela Skinner, one of those athletes with her eye on Tokyo, made the decision to leave college gymnastics in Utah, moved back home to train in Arizona once more because she just didn't feel finished yet taking that alternate position for the Olympic team in 2016. And she said about moving back home, you know, we asked her, how's it been? You living on your own in college, now you're back at home. She said, it's okay. <laughs> Saying she thinks her mom likes it a little bit more than she does. It's quite an adjustment. But she is a trickster. I'll tell you, she was in 2016, and she is now. Before Simone vaulted, she had the top vaulting score of a 14.9. And this floor routine is just about as jam-packed as can possibly be. She'll also try to do that double-twisting, double somersault in the laid-out position that we saw from Jade Carey. Step out of bounds, that's only one-tenth. That was actually a smart decision, yes. very unfortunate, but because that was a combination pass, she kind of over-rotated that first skill. Uh, she was exhausted though, Nastia also. A absolutely, but opened, opened the floor routine with a huge tumbling pass, two flips, two twists, and a laid out position. Didn't quite get that rebound, that height, as she should have, but. But watch, she falls out of that wolf turn, and that that can be up to a point off on something that's simple, but 
really was just, I think, exhausted at the end of this routine. Took a long time in the corner, and I'm very glad she decided to just do that. But I'll tell you what, she has showed that Michaela Skinner can absolutely still hang with the toughest routines in the world. She's amazing. Taking a look now at Grace McCallum, she scores a 14.55 for her effort on bar. So that's a total of 57.7, putting her into second place for now. And I say for now, as we take a look at Riley McCusker, who was in that second spot heading into this final rotation. And Riley, of course, one of the eight that is vying for a Pan Am Games trip. Has beautiful lines. Now this is the tricky combination. She'll try to do three in a row as well. Now down to the low and connect it. Back, nope, she doesn't. And you know, that was a good decision that she did. She was a little close to the bar in that pack salto. And so it's not a mistake. It just will lower her start score. Difficult dismount and way better. Wow, Riley McCusker, you have never, ever looked better. And Riley's still building on that international experience. How important are these results for her? Well, they're extremely important, but I think what's more important for her is to go out here, compete well, and gain confidence. And you see, was going to try to connect that staller to handstand to actually the release move that she did, added in another skill, Tim, as you said, not a deduction, but will lose a little bit in her difficulty in that starting value score. Well, if she wants to go to the Pan Am Games, she's going, that's for sure. So we head back over now and join Leanne Wong, the 2018 U.S. Junior Champion, now taking on the senior ranks in 2019, and so far appearing perfectly capable of stealing some of the spotlight on the elite scene. And you know, talking to her this week, it's not just her ability that stands out, it's her disposition. She's a very serious young lady. I asked her to describe herself. She said, I'm determined and I'm competitive. <laughs> number one and number two. And she likes to win. She did upgraded floor at the American Cup, had never competed these first two passes till that point. The first one's very difficult, Arabian double front in the pike position to a leap. Another very strong routine for Leanne Wong. Did both of those very difficult tumbling runs. The first one was great. Second one, a little bit uncontrolled on the landing. But what makes this so hard is she keeps her legs straight. Makes it infinitely more difficult than a regular Arabian double front. Beautiful. And here's that second tumbling pass. So she does three and a half twists. We saw her do a triple twist off the beam. And, and it was good in the air, just slightly over rotated, her chest down, taking a big step on the landing. I but seem, that's hard. I seem to remember you doing that past <laughs> Nastia for I a did, while. And it wasn't easy. So there are the numbers for Riley McCusker on bars, 14.55. Michaela Skinner as well on floor, scoring a 12.9. And. Riley McCusker into second place now as we take a look once again at Charlize Jones. Mentioned earlier some solid showings in 2018. So far this year, 
competing internationally, a part of a gold medal winning team in Jeslo Trophy. And is one of those athletes that's, look at this, an Arabian front. Oh! And that is too bad. Grabs the beam. Not quite a fall, but heavy deductions. And she does a huge tumbling pass right here. Look at how high she flies. That's ridiculous. So powerful. Just a little bit shaky everywhere on this routine. You know, and once you start your first element and you're you're a little bit off, sometimes it's really hard to get back on track. It's a mental, it, mentally, it's it's challenging. And you know, her coach, Christian Gallardo, after she was done warming up in the regular warm-ups, he went over to the beam and he was shaking and he was talking to the equipment people saying, this isn't right, it's too shaky. And I'll tell you what, that could put something in her mind. There's her coach. Actually, he coached Gabby Douglas at the 2016 Olympic Games. Taking another look now at Jay Carey, whose star has been on the rise since her first senior season in 2017 when she started her medal collection at the American Classic. Then more gold at the U.S. Classic, the National Championships, all leading up to those two podium finishes at Worlds on vault and floor. And just a couple of years ago, she hardly did bars at all. But has she ever packed on the difficulty? It's a lot to do at one time, though. Nice transition from high to low. That's called a Baharwaj, named after the great Mohini from the United States, an Olympian. She has come so far on this event, short on the handstand. Great landing, a huge, huge improvement for Jade and shows that she can really contend down the road, but this routine, it has a lot of errors And you know, it, it. It, it has, but it's been a while since she's even competed in the all-around competition. You see the two elements in a row. The skills that she's doing, sorry Tim, are, they're, they're, they're difficult, oh, you know? Yeah. So it's not that she's struggling with easy skills, but Bars just has never really come naturally to Jade, but has put in so much hard work on this event. But anything to do with legs has, and she has got strong ones, and is able to do this over and over again. Fly high, stick the landing, another Gymnastics 101 from Jade. So we'll have the score for Jade Carey in a moment. In the meantime, Leanne Wong, after that floor routine, scoring a 13.9 as we head on back over to the beam and the final routine now for Morgan Hurd. We saw Shailise Jones on beam a moment ago, 13.45, the number there. And 2019, bringing more success already for Morgan Hurd, won the all-around gold at the Tokyo World Cup this spring was in sixth place, has definitely the potential to move up with his balance beam routine. She'll have to get through this first though, back with a full. Very good, she was trying in practice to connect that to a leap, which I really think is not the best idea. Just makes something that's so risky even more so. You see her talking herself through the entire routine. Some people like to visualize, some people like to tell themselves key words. Your coach, of course, not allowed or able to talk to you in a competition, which is very different than in training. What were your key words on beam? Oh, I had one for every single skill. <laughs> Two times she has been on the podium at the World Championships. She won it in 2017 for the all-around, got a bronze. Oh, a little bit of an adjustment right there. In 2018, the silver medalist, Mai Murakami, already off of the Japanese team. Double pike. 
Nice landing position. Small little hop. Just really that one balance check, right, Nastia? Yeah, and, and from the beginning, you know, it was very confident. Again, very difficult routine. The skill that she did have a balance check on probably doesn't look like the most difficult because it's a dance element, that leap, but she does lose complete sight of the beam. But here's how she opened the routine. Standing full. So difficult. Yeah. Even again, even just to do on the floor, and yet she does it on four inches wide. And of course, nice dismount gets a really good bop. Bounce off the balance beam has excellent position as she's meeting the floor. That's what the judges are looking for. I'd call that a one-tenth slide as well. But you know, when we talked to her earlier this week, especially after after a training session, we asked her how her day went. And she goes, you know, it was a little rough, but it's still early in the season. And, and we asked, what would it take to, to not be have a rough training or be, you know, <laughs> so rough? And she said, I just need some more numbers and experience to get exactly where I want to get. Once again, she is vying for the Pan Am Games, and I cannot imagine them not selecting Morgan Hurd, Riley McCusker for sure. Grace, Grace McCollum took herself out, didn't want to do it, as did Simone Biles, the first and third place gymnast coming into the last rotation. Jay Carey, we see there scoring a 13.05 for a total of 54.95. So she goes into ninth place. Morgan Hurd was in sixth position after three rotations. And you know, when we spoke to Morgan, as you mentioned yesterday, Nastia, I asked her what would make this whole crazy ride, as she put it, worth it. And she told me it already is, that her satisfaction with what she's accomplished and still will accomplish in gymnastics has more to do with a feeling than a particular medal. So really an impressive perspective from an already <laughs> impressive athlete. Absolutely. But I'll tell you back, going back to Jade Carey's uneven bar score, that might be one of the most impressive routines I've seen. She has come so far. And Morgan Hurd is finishing her day off with a big smile. And 13.9 is the number total, 56.5. She goes into sixth place. So that'll do it for the day. The 2019 U.S. Classic has come to an end. But our time with you has not. Keep it right here. In a moment, we'll have a chance to hear from Simone Biles and give you our final thoughts on the other side. Once again, Simone Biles in a league of her own after some solid performances today at the U.S. Classic. And here she is on vault, as impressive as ever, or perhaps even more impressive than she ever has been, if that's even possible. I think you said it, Tim. It just doesn't seem to make any sense, and yet she continues to dominate the sport of gymnastics. As we take a look at the final standings, Simone topping the leaderboard by just over two points. Riley McCusker with the silver medal and Grace McCallum rounding out the top three. And right now we have a chance to welcome in Simone for a chat. Simone, thanks for joining us. This makes it all around title number four for you at the U.S. Classic. We talked about your objective for this meet coming in, but how satisfied are you with your efforts today? Yes, today I'm very satisfied. I'm a little sad that I went out of bounds on floor, but overall I think there are some improvements to be made on beam and bars um, still on floor, and then we'll see what happens on vault, maybe upgrades. Hey, Simone, I have to tell you, I I'd like to ask a favor of you because mm -hmm. it, it gets really <laughs> tough up in the booth. I think I would love for you to go home and invent a few more adjectives <laughs> because it's I, I run out after the first rotation. It's unbelievable Aww. how much better can you actually be? I don't know. I feel like every day in training, I kind of amaze myself even more. So we'll have to see what's to come. I mean, speaking about amazing yourself, I think you may, amazed all of us yesterday in training with a triple double. I'm just going to ask, when is that coming out on the competition floor? So hopefully um, during nationals in Kansas City, hopefully for one of those days, I can put it in. 
And then, of course, with the Olympics being right around the corner now, we're about a year out. I know yes. you've kind of already been through this process. You told mm -hmm. us earlier this week that now you kind of know what that feeling is like. But yes. tell everybody else what exactly is going on in your mind as you're yeah. getting ready for Tokyo. Right now, it's a little bit it's a little scary just because I've been through the Olympic process before. And so to repeat it is kind of nerve wracking because, you know, you want to make the team and you want to do best and represent the U.S. Um, but I feel like if I proceed to do the trainings that I've been with, I think it should be OK. And looking forward to 2020, mm -hmm. I mean, it's what, do you have specific goals yet? Ooh. I mean, you have five yeah. <laughs> Olympic medals, four yeah. of them are gold, 20 <laughs> world championship medals. Yeah. Can can that sink in for a second? 20 um, world. <laughs> yeah, well, I always want to do better than I could before, and I'm not sure how it will play out, but I definitely want to do, do a little bit better on beam just because I stress over that event so much because I know how good I am on that event. So we'll see. Can you win a medal at the Olympic Games and the World Championships again on every event? <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I think the competition gets better every year, and you just have to try to top the year before. Tim, trying to put her on the spot there. Simone, yes. thank you so You're much. Welcome. Don't forget those adjectives. Thank you. I will work on it. All right, we will see Simone in Kansas City in just a few weeks time. Just an incredible athlete and of course a number of athletes with some really great performance to performances today. Riley McCusker, Grace McCallum as well. Any unexpected results? from those athletes? Well, not unexpected. Um, Riley McCusker has really stamped her place on the U.S. team at this point in time. In the past, I always thought she was a little nervy, looked a little bit unsure of herself, but she was as far from that as can be, and she really showed today she's the second best gymnast in this country. And you know what that means? She's most likely the second best gymnast in the world. That is an incredible feat. And to stand up and be compared next to Simone Biles, never an easy task. Those two certainly held their own. But let's take a quick look back at some of the highlights from Simone earlier tonight. And right here, again, this is where she started off. But look at the just the air that she gets. It was absolutely an incredible start. And it only got better from there in rotation two, three, and four. Ginormous full twisting double, like we've said over and over again, can add a full twist to that. And we didn't see the triple double here this weekend. Hopefully, we'll be seeing that at nationals. But look at this the Biles to a punch layout. So much power, she can't even stay on the floor. And the hardest vault done today, but she can do it with an extra half twist. She can just play with everybody else. She's amazing. And you know what's even more amazing when we talk to her about the transition of really this becoming a business for her, not just a passion. She said, no, no, I just want to <laughs> think of it as a hobby. I'm not ready to start adulting <laughs> and to take on all that responsibility. But even as she says that, she is in full control of all the decisions that she's making from now through Tokyo. And we cannot wait to watch her on that journey. So that does it from Louisville. But don't miss Simone Biles and the top U.S. gymnast back in action for the 2019 U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Kansas City. Coverage begins August 8th and continues through August 11th on NBC and NBCSN. I think you two will be there. We'll look forward to hearing that call. For Nastia Lukin and Tim Daggett, I'm Tanith White. Thanks for joining us.